Hey there guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be talking about one of the more common questions that I'm often asked about the place that I live, which obviously, as you can tell from my videos, is the country or a rural setting. And uh, most commonly, people phrase the question like, uh, what are the pros and cons of of living in the country versus a town or a city or something like that. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. I'm gonna to try to kind of uh, detail the good things about living in the country and the not so good things. And uh, you know, I'll let you decide for yourself in case you happen to be one of these people who might be on the fence about if you wanna live in the sticks or in the big city. All right, so I've got a little list here and I think what I'm gonna do is just go straight through all of the pros about living in the country and then I will go through all of the cons or the downsides about living in the country. And the reason for that is that some of these items kind of build upon one another uh, versus going pro con, pro con. I, I think it would be harder to follow. So uh, I guess uh, with that said, let's get started. So number one, the very first thing that comes to mind when people ask me this question is space. And when I say space, I mean literal physical space for me to move around and not be impeded by a person or an object or a house or any other structure. Uh, but I also mean metaphorical space uh, to where I can think and not be impeded by some external force of you know, uh, sounds of traffic or people coming and going or a neighbor peeking over a wall at me. Basically, it's, it's space for me to mentally uh, let my mind expand as well as physically being able to move around and not be impeded. And with that space comes by far the most important benefit of all, and that is liberty. It is quite simply the liberty for me to live my life in the manner that I choose, so long as I'm not hurting anybody else. It's the liberty for me to garden in the manner that I wish, whether it's in ugly buckets or beautiful raised beds, and I don't have to worry about a neighbor peering over the fence, judging me on whether or not it should be in my yard and potentially calling the ordinance police on me. It's the liberty for me to harvest rainwater out of the sky and collect it in tanks that some people might consider ugly, I tend to like the look of water tanks, um, but it is the liberty for me to do the things that I wish and the space for me to do those things without affecting other people. I've built so many different things. I was able to build this travel trailer and my shop and my greenhouse, and I really didn't affect anybody, and that is something I value a ton. Um, it is also the removal of uh, external forces of local governance like HOAs that a lot of people are subject to. Uh, we've all seen the stories. Somebody raises an American flag or, I don't know, a Swedish flag or whatever, whatever your flag of choice is and the HOA sues the homeowner for doing so or somebody tries to put up a shed in their backyard and it's not painted the right color and the HOA imposes fines on them. Uh, basically, I just always, I sum it all up in the word of liberty, and I just think the more rural you live, the more liberty you're allowed to have, because when you do things, it affects less people uh, versus living in, in a community or a city. Uh, you know, you run a, a saw for two seconds and there's probably three or four neighbors angry at you, and you may or may not have uh, the local police knocking on your door with some sort of noise ordinance or citation or something like that. So that's probably definitely gonna be the biggest one, uh, but if you can't tell, that is probably the most important one for me. Another benefit that I think a lot of people don't really realize is the simple act of living in a rural environment with less people around is that it forces you to become a more resourceful and more self-reliant person. As in, you can't really just drive to the hardware store very quickly to pick something up or have a repair person just swing on by. Um, you're kind of forced to use things that you already have on hand and try to make do with the things that you do have on hand. If you look back through a lot of my videos, a lot of them I use parts and pieces from older projects to complete newer projects and basically that's just uh, almost like an internal recycling and I just think it contributes to being a more self-reliant and as I said resourceful person. And the next one is also connected with space quite a bit 
and that is the benefit of having less pollution. I think it's no secret that people who live in congested cities are exposed to far more toxic chemicals than somebody who lives in a very rural environment. And I will uh, concede that I live near a very large mine. Uh, so if they started uh, building a smelter and pushing you know, various fumes out, then in some cases, the rural environment will provide more toxins. But just in general, cities and towns in uh, densely populated areas are vastly more subject uh, to pollution. And then uh, in a, <laughs> Yeah, related to that is also just being a little bit more connected with nature. When you live out in the country, you tend to notice, uh, notice things like leaves, uh, bugs that hatch uh, from year to year like cicadas and different things like that. Whereas if you live in the concrete jungle, you tend to be a little more removed from things like that. And I, I think that's kind of a cool thing that I enjoy seeing uh, living out here in the country. Well, I'm back and clearly it's been a couple of days since I started talking about the benefits to rural living. I had to cut that recording short because my wife and daughter found a rattlesnake on her walking trail just a little bit too close to the house. So I had to use my DIY snake pole and remove it off the property. And I'll probably put that footage towards the end. And yes, that will probably be on the negatives or the downsides to rural living. Um, and then also, if you're wondering about the mustache, um, the earlier five o'clock shadow that you saw was from a couple of week vacation we took in the White Mountains of Arizona. And I just usually shave it into a mustache for a couple of days just for fun. Um, so anyway, the last half of this video, I'll probably shave it off so I look a little bit more familiar to you guys. Okay, now we'll get back to the questions or the benefits. And the next thing I have on my list of benefits to rural living is that while you will have fewer neighbors, in my opinion and experience, you will have stronger relationships with rural neighbors than you will in a city or town environment. That's not to say that you can't have great relationships if you live in a subdivision or a apartment complex or something like that, but it's just in my experience, the relationships are a little more genuine since there's fewer people. And I kind of relate that to being in a large room or a large gathering with say 50 or 100 people. People kind of mingle and they get to know uh, one another a little bit um, versus a room with say five or six people. You can really get to know them a little bit better. But uh, anyway, that's just my experience having lived both in a city and a town uh, setting versus a rural setting where I'm at right now. And frankly, I have awesome neighbors. And the last two benefits I'll talk about in regard to rural living have to do with two very recent and current events that I'm pretty sure most of you around the world have experienced to some degree or another. And the first of those has to do with health crises or epidemics or pandemics, however you want to define that. Um, regardless of your views on the severity or non-severity of the current epidemic, I think it is no secret if you look at the statistics that you are much better off in a rural setting than you are in a densely populated area such as a city or an apartment building or something like that where you may have uh, hundreds or thousands of people all congregating through a various <laughs> single digit number of exits uh, into a building or a neighborhood or something like that. So rural living essentially just has the social distancing built in. Um, and I just think uh, it's just a better alternative going forward in the future if any more of these things pop up, which I'm sure they likely will. And the last benefit I will highlight in regard to rural living has to do with the recent events of civil unrest and riots that we've seen across the world. Quite simply, when you live in a rural, low population environment, you remove yourself from the densely populated environment where these type of events tend to happen. Uh, simply, it is just the desire of the media to have a sensational story. And if there's a big building on fire or stores getting looted and broken into, it's just a better news story. And on the 
rioters or protesters side, they obviously have some sort of message that they are trying to convey and uh, they're not going to want to do it in some rural area that the news is not going to cover. So they're, they're trying to get their message out as well. Please don't take these comments out of context. That doesn't mean if you live rurally that you cannot empathize with a certain uh, cause or something like that. But what I'm saying is if you don't want to be involved in these things, for God's sake, get out of the city and get into the country. Hopefully that made sense. And I am back after a quick trim to get rid of the mustache. Now I will talk about the cons of rural living. I'll probably take about half the time to talk about the cons, even though there are just as many cons as pros, um, but uh, I wanted to focus more on the good things about rural living. And uh, so I will go through the cons now. If you live in a rural environment, that very nature means you don't live by stores or services or a lot of other things. So when I want to go to Home Depot or go to the grocery store or anything else like that, it takes me a long time. And that is a big detraction because if I get the hankering to have a, a thirst buster at Circle K, well, it's gonna take me probably 35 minutes minimum to go down there and back. Um, but that is just something that I accept. However, I think it can also be a uh, pro because when you live rurally like this, it kind of forces you to make your lists a little more careful so you don't have to run back and forth to the store because you forgot something. So I think you uh, end up being forced to be a smarter shopper. Next thing on my list is police, fire, EMS. When you live in a rural area, obviously you are farther away from the population centers, meaning you are farther away from help. As I mentioned earlier in the pros about rural living making you be more resourceful of a person, well, that is because you don't have a police officer that's gonna come um, in just a couple minutes to your house to help you with something or a fire department or an ambulance you are going to have to figure out a way to mitigate your situation. Usually that's going to be through neighbors or through your own personal preparations um, until help arrives and help is going to take a longer time to get there. So I would actually put that as a large, uh, that, that would be a big consideration for people who do not feel comfortable being personally responsible for their safety and different things like that. Um, but. You know, I think it is something that uh, is a measured risk and I would still much rather be out here than stuck in some city somewhere. All right, next on my list is limited services and I put trash, internet, and water. Well, you guys know my water situation pretty well, um, but when you live rurally, you may not have access to municipal water, so you may have to drill a well, harvest rainwater, things like that. Um, internet wise, our internet is decent here for streaming. Like I can watch a movie off of Netflix or YouTube or stuff like that. But the big detraction for me is I, it will take me five to six to seven hours to upload a video to YouTube. So I have to go down to a local library or a coffee shop or my mom's house and upload there. So it just is another inconvenience and then trash. Well, I don't have any trash service here, although there are some rural trash services. They are more expensive than those in town. So I choose to have a trash trailer, which I might show a clip of right now, where I collect all of my trash over the course of a couple of months and I take it to the dump myself. Holly, come. All right, the next one on the list is wildfire danger. That is a big concern out here in the West where we are very dry for most of the year. I'm probably gonna do a video that will elaborate on the preps we make every year to make sure our house is as defensible as possible. But like with the uh, police, EMS, and fire, like limited services, it's just something you have to prep yourself and be a little bit personally responsible for. Um, after that, I had poor roads. Generally, rural areas do not have the best roads. Uh, so it's just something that you're gonna have to realize. It may have more wear and tear on your vehicle and just may not be as comfortable getting around. 
and related to poor roads, um, I also put that sometimes our access can be cut off out here. Um, our roads being not the best roads, sometimes during monsoon season can have flooding across the road. And obviously while it's flooding, you can't cross, but sometimes the flooding will wash out portions of the road. So we may be stuck out here for two days at a time, depending on the severity of a storm. But again, I still like living out here. And then I had one more thing on my list and I put post office. When you live in a very rural area, the post office will have some sort of like road box. Uh, in our area, they call it a rural route. And I don't get any packages delivered to my house unless it's like UPS or FedEx, which actually will come to my house and deliver packages. But the post office will just give me a little slip which isn't a huge deal. I have to go down and pick it up at the post office. But the problem is, as I mentioned, like the travel time, for me to go pick up one package, uh, 30 to 35 minutes would be a best case scenario, as in I just went there, got the package, and came home immediately. But I'm a human, so if I'm gonna go there, I might end up stopping at Dunkin' Donuts and getting a donut, getting a thirst buster, and all that kind of stuff, uh, because we have our vices, right? And I almost forgot to talk about the snake. That is gonna be another con of living in the country. Sometimes you are gonna have critters that you have to deal with and sometimes they're gonna be snakes. This is my snake pole that I will show you removing the snake with. I made this a few years ago. And uh, no, I didn't kill the snake. If I don't find them too close to the house, I try to leave them be and just move them away. So I'll show you that. And this is one of the things that I will put in the con side of living in the country. Sometimes you have rattlesnakes. All right, I'm gonna go release them on the side of the property. All right guys, that is pretty much gonna do it for this video. I hope it was informative and maybe gave you some things to think about, especially for those of you who may be considering making a move to a rural area sometime soon. And for those of you who have no intention to move from wherever you are, um, especially be it a, an urban area, please remember all these things I was talking about are just my opinions. There are tons of great things about living in more densely populated areas. You have a lot more conveniences uh, and and you have a lot more resources available to you. Uh, so please don't take anything I said as saying that that is a worse living situation. But uh, one more thing I do wanna say in light of all of the recent events with lockdowns and stuff like that, I would highly recommend those of you who are thinking about moving somewhere to really look at the response your local government and state governments made during this and see if it's something that aligns with your personal values uh, because you may want to move to a different area that more closely aligns with your values, but you also may want to stay. So anyway, uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe, uh, share it with others, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you on the next one. love or passion There's something desperately wrong with me It's not fair to you, I know and I'm sorry I can't let go There's something desperately